artist in Dime, and we've talked about textures and identified that his most popular subject matter was hearts. So we are going to draw our own hearts and fill them with designs to create textures. So I've got just a simple cookie cutter here and we're going to use this to get our first heart shape. So I'm going to set that in the middle of my paper and I'm going to go right in with the crayon. I'm not even going to bother with pencil in this project. And I'm going to trace around my cookie cutter to get that first heart. Once I'm done with that, I'm going to get another color and I'm going to make another heart becoming larger and growing out from this one. I'm going to kind of recreate this shape. Then I can come in with my next color and get an even bigger heart. And this one is going off of my paper. And with that, I've got my radiating hearts and I'm ready to fill them with textures. Each one I'm going to fill with a different texture um, or design pattern. Remember we can repeat shapes, we can repeat letters, we can repeat designs over and over again and it gives our eye the illusion that something has a certain feeling or a texture. You can do the same thing, just fill it with a texture, or you could create a unique pattern. I'm going to just fill this with a texture, so it's so rough. So I'm just going to repeat the letter X over and over again. And as they overlap, it starts to kind of remind me of hay, and how it's kind of tickly and rough and a little bit pokey. You sit on it and go on a hay ride. Now, our next step is going to be painting with watercolors. We are using liquid watercolors, and these are really cool. Um, these liquid watercolors actually have glitter added into them, so it gives us a little sparkle and a little bit of fun. When you get yours, you're going to want to keep your lids matched to the colors, otherwise it does muddy the colors and makes them quite gross. So I'm going to take them off, and I'm going to set them next to each and every color. Um, we will want to mix our colors when we're wanting to paint with them because the glitter will settle at the bottom. There are a selection of brushes for you available, all different sizes. I like to work with a nice big brush so that I can fill my space. Stir it up, get my glitter, and then I'm going to start to paint each heart. Notice that on my purple heart, I am using this yellow-green. I don't want to use purple because then I'm not going to see that texture and that pattern that I drew to create that texture. Rinse my brush, select another color, stir it up so I know I get some glitter in there. And you can see how these are kind of moving around and gathering and creating puddles. This is because our crayons are made out of wax, and the wax kind of repels the watercolors away or pushes them away, and so they kind of collect and gather in these swirls a little bit. When it's dry, everything stands out. Now I'm painting each part solid with one color. I've seen students use a variety of colors. I've seen students not even follow lines and just paint their own designs over the top. Um, however you choose to do it is fine. Just make sure that you're painting with a thin color and not over painting. If you paint way too much, then your paper might actually disintegrate, you'll be very frustrated, and we won't see our stuff come out. Um, I can come in with all my colors, I can start to fill my background in, 
And I just love to watch how the watercolors roll off of those crayons. I think it's cool. all of my areas and I'm pretty happy with it. I'm going to let it dry and with that our project is done looking at Jim Dine and creating our own texture parts.